I'm going to talk briefly about the area that's sort of closest to my heart, which is an, a, an area of applied psychology um, in forensic psychology about deception. Um, I'm particularly interested in the kinds of choices that people make when they decide to deceive and when they decide to tell the truth and what they think makes a successful lie. Okay? And my research has suggested that what we do is we behave very strategically when it comes to lying. So we think about the person that we're going to be lying to or the situation that we're going to be lying in. And what we do is we tailor our presentation to what we think that they're expecting. So we might think about what we're going to say, how we're going to say it, and when we're going to say it to make best impact in terms of reducing the amount of effort we have to make to think about those lies. Generally speaking, people think they're bad liars and reasonably good lie detectors. They don't think they're Sherlock Holmes, but they think they're okay. The research would suggest that actually more lies go unnoticed than not. That's because more lies are low stake, relatively little consequence um, and kind of everyday lies that, that just slip out in everyday life. Additionally, we show a truth bias when it comes to interacting with other people. That's sensible if we think about social interaction, but it's not helpful when it comes to lie detection. So I'd just like to leave you with a couple of little tips and tricks to make you better lie detectors. Given what I said about how liars tailor their presentations to what they think you're expecting, the best thing to do is to challenge their expectations. Ask them open-ended questions. That forces them to do the talking and it also doesn't tell them how much you actually know about the other evidence that you might have. Ask them questions that aren't going to give you the answers that might be rehearsed. And whilst you might not have any control over when the initial lie comes, you do have control over when you ask the follow-up questions. So ask them when they're least expecting it. Put them on the back foot. And the other tip I'd give you is that once you've done that, if you've got a baseline of truthful behaviour that you can use that's fairly comparable in terms of severity and in terms of difficulty, look for differences between those two sets of behaviour. Don't assume it's because they're lying, they might be doing something else, but then ask them questions that's designed to challenge them in terms of that, um, that change in their behaviour. So what I've tried to do is to give you a little flavour of what psychology is and, and why it's so exciting and some of the things that we do here at Glamorgan. I've also tried to give you a few tips and tricks that, that you might find useful in your everyday lives. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you for listening.